Some people think that we are living inside a simulation, that the Matrix is real, although not necessarily exactly the same as the Matrix where we have the really cool wire fighting and all that. If that were true, what are we sitting at and using right now? Or to put it another way, can a computer run itself inside itself? Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Waste Time, we ask the question, can a computer simulate itself? So a pretty important thing for us to believe a computer simulation that we're living in is that we can use computers. Eventually we would develop that technology no matter what, there's just no way for it not to happen. The human brain and pattern recognition and the scientific method would always eventually yield a computer. Because of our constant push of expansion and research and development, if we start with no computers we're eventually going to have some form of a computer. That's in any time timeline, man. So what if our environment is a computer? What if this is all just a big simulation? And I'm not saying that it is, because I'm going to be frank, I'm very skeptical of that theory. But that doesn't really play into the question. The question is whether or not a computer can eventually simulate itself. And being that's the question, I'm not going to talk about how exactly it would be able to simulate the world up until the point where somebody builds that computer, because that involves a lot of information about simulating the human body, the human experience experience, etc, etc, and I don't think that that's relevant information at this question. But let's define exactly what we're talking about here. If a computer is simulating itself inside itself, and when I say simulation I mean one to one, you're kind of talking about a physical impossibility. The computer would have to be running some sort of OS in order to run the simulation. Therefore it has resources that are committed to other things. Let's arbitrarily say that the parent system has 12 gigabytes of RAM. There's a physical impossibility associated with the idea of emulating a computer with 12 gigabytes of RAM here, because there are other processes on the parent computer that are running outside of the child computer. That is to say, the simulated computer isn't the only thing running on the physical computer. Now that doesn't make the simulation itself impossible, however it does make a one-to-one -one simulation impossible, because in order to handle this type of load, the simulated computer would have to operate at a slower speed. If it ran one-to-one, -one, it would essentially automatically overload it. Itself. So what kind of computer can a computer simulate? Well, speaking in terms of being able to simulate something at its full speed, one-to-one, -one, at full capacity with all of its hardware and specs and whatnot, the parent computer would have to be better than the child computer. So in some ways, yes, you can simulate a computer, but it's just not going to be at the same speed. Everything that is done by a computer can ultimately be boiled down to zeros and ones, meaning on and off, meaning switches. That means anything that can simulate a switch can, if speed is not a concern, simulate a computer. For instance, the ability to create circuits exists in the computer game Minecraft. And a lot of people have done a lot of interesting things using it. For instance, more than a few people have built functioning calculators. But on top of that, at least one person has built a Minimips processor, which if fleshed out would in theory be able to run a version of Minecraft. There have actually been various processors built, from that Minimips I mentioned, to 8-bit RISC CPUs, to even custom architecture that, well, hasn't fully existed in the real world. Now, the reason why you don't run Minecraft on one of these Minecraft simulated processors is because because you'd have to build a full simulated computer, and although you probably could do that, it would have to run Minecraft at an obscenely low frame rate due to the architecture of Minecraft itself. It wouldn't be playable, it would be more like a slideshow, and not even a particularly fast moving slideshow, a leisurely slideshow. On top of porting Minecraft to work on this processor, you'd also have to port the Java runtime, which is itself a virtual machine, a custom virtual machine, a computer that has only ever existed in the abstract. Before the Java virtual machine's existence, there had never been a physical Java machine, which is a very interesting thing thought. If indeed we are living in a computer simulation, then all of the computers in our lives are exactly the same thing as the Java virtual machine. Machines that aren't necessarily as powerful as the main machine. 
Or perhaps they are as powerful, but they're all running a lot slower. Perhaps the main machine is literally just like your laptop, but it runs much faster. Again, following the idea that we're in a computer simulation, perhaps all of the hardware we have in this world is modeled on real hardware, but because we've only ever experienced the relative speed that they work at in this simulated world, we think that this is just the inherent physical limitation of the hardware. Now again, that's not to say I buy that. I kind of look at this question in a different way. Let's say you wanted to simulate a PS4 on a PS4. Would that be possible? Well, no. Would you be able to emulate a PS3 on a PS4? Maybe. It hasn't actually been done, but we know for certain that both the PS3 and the PS4 can emulate a PS2 and a PS1. So whether or not a computer can simulate itself is kind of a question of, well, whether or not you mean one-to-one -one when you say simulation. Because if you don't mean one-to-one, -one, then yes, a computer most certainly can emulate a much, much, much slower version of itself. But if you are saying one-to-one, -one, then no, it's not possible. It would basically just lock itself up. It's a physical impossibility to run from an OS that takes up some resources, an exact duplicate, specs and all, that would require the exact set of resources that are available without the OS running, without the loader running, without the construct running, whatever you want to call it. It's basically like saying one minus 0.1, let's say for the OS, and then minus one. You're left with negative 0.1. And in a world where physical resources actually matter, that can't be done. Now, there's a lot more to discuss regarding theory, regarding execution of this idea. We'd love it if people did so in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. We upload new videos all the time, and we thank you very much for watching this one. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter, at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time here on Waste Time.